Hey everyone, Chris Petrie here. Thanks so much for coming by. We're actually having a beautiful time here. We're painting a gorgeous seascape scene here. We're having some really fun time doing the glazing technique. We're doing some beautiful sky washes and we're covering the whole paper with a beautiful blue wash. Then we're going to go over with our second glazing and start doing our hills and our grasses here on the bottom of the painting. And then eventually we're going to start doing our third part of the video which is the third part of the glazing which is our dark darks which are down here doing our weeds and some of the rocks down here in the bottom portion of our painting so you're going to learn how to do this gorgeous beautiful seascape painting uh, step by step i'm going to show you how to do it cover all the details all the whole enchilada of how to do this oodles of information here so if you stick with me here on my channel on chris petri on youtube here you're going to learn all of the beautiful details of watercolor painting one step at a time no stress no fuss no muss you'll see how actually simple it really is and then you just have to practice the steps and um, you follow us each week every week uh, at a time and you learn the same techniques over and over and over again and it'll just be like second hand you'll just be able to learn the basics of watercolor by following each week as we go and um, you'll have a great time of it you'll be doing beautiful paintings like this and even better ones yet to come. So um, I'll be right back. We'll start out. We'll do our pencil sketch first and then we'll do our painting after that on this video. But again, the whole enchilada of details will be in this video so you can kind of see how we created this video, how we created this painting and uh, you'll have a great time. Okay, so come on by, uh, strap yourselves in, grab a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, uh, grab your favorite beverage, enjoy. Grab your paper, your pencils, your paints, your watercolor brushes, and um, we're going to have a great time, okay? So I promise you that. We're going to have fun here, at least at a minimum. <laughs> and then after that, we're going to also to talk about how we do this in detail so you don't miss a step, okay? All right, so we'll be right back. All right, everybody, we're getting back started again here. Uh, you just saw the finished painting, so we're going to kind of like start out with the sketch, the drawing first, and we'll get into the painting portion here. Um, the only thing different I think we're going to do um, on this video is you're the artist. You understand that sometimes you might have, um, you might go to a garage sale, you might find something that's a little different, you might find... Um, a different palette or some different colors you might want to experiment and try some new colors some new paints so all I'm gonna do here is just interject a little bit of interest and um, excitement to our video let's work with a different palette this is something I used to have I used to use I, I put it in the um, in my in my uh, drawer in my uh, art supply drawer and I haven't used it in a while but this is an interesting palette it's plastic plastic palette and it has like uh, 12 colors and you can kind of see that the colors are similar to what we always use on a consistent basis you have all your blues your greens I add a little bit of spritz I use a spritzer bottle here I just spritz some water on there there's a black in there there's some reds some oranges some yellows some greens so it's kind of got the same colors as we normally use on a, on a consistent basis except this is a you know more like a store-bought or you know something you can buy online that's more of an inexpensive palette uh, sometimes the two paints can be a little expensive so if you want to change change up a little bit and maybe try some and it's really fun just to try something different doesn't that make sense you, you're the artist you have to understand that um, once in a while it's fun just to try a new palette out with some new colors and it might be a little different these are more hard paints these are hard um, uh, paints that are in the uh, the wells here so this is not you know the soft squeeze tube paint this is more like your hard hard paints and then I just spritz some water on there to activate them and I've, I've been spritzing the water on for the last half an hour to get them softer and moister okay so that's all really and this is just something you can use your normal palette that we always use you don't have to use this palette or of course but it I, I'd like to change my palette just a little bit once in a while just to have some fun see what different colors we can come up with and things like that so hopefully this won't be too much of a, an issue for you if you follow along on a regular basis you're just going to use your regular colors if you don't really have 
like a, an, a pallet like this where you might have found something at a garage sale or you found a, a discount you found a discount uh, pallet online some of you might be looking for a bargain so you're going to go online and find some discount um, bargain basement priced pallets with some paints in there you know to save a little bit of bucks and money uh, I like to do that once in a while myself so I'm with you on that so I'm just taping down my pallet so it doesn't move all around for the video sake when we make videos here and if you decide you want to make your own videos you just have to remember you have to keep everything secure and you don't want stuff sliding all around when you're doing a video that looks really unpleasant when you're making a video for your YouTube enthusiasts out there that want to create some YouTube videos you just want to have everything locked down real solid here locked and loaded nice and tight papers all taped down good and uh, we're all set so now the next thing we're gonna do is and again you just saw the finished painting so that I always like to do that in the beginning of the video I like to show you that finished painting does that make sense this way you kind of see what we're gonna do here from right from the beginning so you might say you know oh I looked at the painting I don't like that too much I, I'm not gonna do that one well then you just you wait till next week and if you subscribe below uh, on the right hand side if you subscribe and this way at least next week you'll be alerted to maybe some flower paintings you want to do or whatever we might be doing boats or a cityscape or something like that or even figures or whatever we do everything watercolor here so always remember we're doing everything watercolor here on my channel and and if you don't like a certain video or you kind of it's good to watch it anyway just to see the same techniques and methods over and over again because then it'll get locked in tight into your memory into your process of thinking so even if you don't really think the subject matter is the greatest you might not like um, seascapes or you know landscapes maybe on this video we're doing at least if you watch you're gonna learn the kind of the colors you'll keep hearing the colors over and over the methods the techniques it's gonna help you as an artist as a watercolor artist but again you might be super busy and you can't watch every video that's fine if you want to skip to the next one next week that's why the subscribe button is there as well as those little bells you just click the notification bells on the subscribe button and this way you have um, you're alerted every week um, as to what new videos are coming out and it doesn't mean anything else so when you subscribe and you click the notification bells you're not getting any emails phone calls text messages anything like that it's just YouTube will send you a little alert saying hey Chris Petrie has made a new video and then you can check it out quick and you'll have it right there on your YouTube channel your own channel that you have because you Obviously, you are probably have your YouTube application and you're checking it. So they're just going to send you a little alert saying, you know, Chris made a new video. That's all it is. Okay, so we have our tape on our paper. We tape the paper here all around. And then we're just going to sort of, we're going to maybe go maybe two-thirds. So one-third, remember the um, process we always have is try to kind of think of your paper as space divisions so you might want to make it two-thirds land and one-third sky or maybe two-thirds sky one-third land so that's up to you how you want to do that here I think we're going to do two-thirds land maybe one-third sky so I'm just gonna take my uh, pencil here and make some lines we're gonna do some lines across there that's gonna be some hills here and then we're gonna have a little some more hills here going across and then we're going to have some more. And I'm just doing some rough lines here. We're going to have maybe some rocks over here. Like that. So I'm going to have a rock or two over here. You can kind of see how I did these rocks. Like so. Maybe another couple of rocks here. Like so. And then we're going to have, uh, let's see, let's maybe make some rocks over here. More in the distance here now. So. like that some rocks there and then our ocean our ocean is going to be the um, 
the ocean line, we're going to, you know, the uh, distant horizon line of the ocean. Let's make this across here like so. And then maybe we're going to have a little bit of misty, distant mm, hills over here. Like that. So you can kind of see we've created a Uh, interesting grouping of parallel lines for our hills in small areas of water and um, grass and fields and marshes and rocks. So basically what we did here is we kind of just made the first one was an angle like so. If I'm using a ruler just to kind of gauge what we're doing here. So the first, the first sort of line that goes across is sort of like a, you know, some grass and weeds along here with some rocks. That's, that's about one third of the way up on the paper. So let's just kind of say, all right, one third. So the first third of your composition is going to be this sort of slanting to the right. You know, it's not level. It's going down to the right a little bit like this on a pitch like this, right? with some rocks like that right one-third over to a little bit of it like I said a little bit of an angle this way then the next bit of land is over here just like maybe halfway between center of the second third so this is two-thirds so center of the two-thirds section, you're going to have this other bit of land and some colors, some color changes, like that. And then two-thirds of the way up. So now you have your two-thirds section. You're going to have your distant hills. So you can kind of see I made my distant mountains, purple mountains. These are purple because they're sort of in the very, very distance. So they look purplish and blue, light colors, cool colors. Okay, so you can kind of see that in the distance here, and this is the ocean, so some ocean here as we're along the shore. This is a coastal scene. And then up top here you have your sky, and our sky is very loose. We're not going to really do any drawing in our sky. We're going to let our sky happen. It's just going to be a fun happening. Your skies, you want to leave those skies really loose, really fun. Nothing worse than an overworked sky with too many pencil lines and clouds and suffering over details leave your skies real loose trust me there's enough details down here with the rocks and the ground and this weeds and grasses down here you don't need to do anything of detail up on the sky you just let the sky happen as it will I've painted thousands of skies trust me so I can tell you with certainty that a loose, fun, free looking sky is going to look the best. Okay, so now we have our pencil sketch done. We're all set. We're going to go in and start doing our painting. And I hope you'll uh, have fun with this, enjoy it. We're going to again use this different palette. If you don't, um, just remember this. If I use a new palette like this, no worries, don't stress. If you're following me on a regular basis, just use your regular palette that I always use on a consistent basis. I just wanted to change my palette because I wanted to kind of have that guilty, you know, fun pleasure of using a new palette with some new colors and see what happens. I want to kind of spice up my life a little bit here with some interesting colors and new palettes and whatever. No reason for you to get stressed over it or, you know, um, you know, just use your normal palette that you use on a consistent basis. I'm using a little different palette here, but... It's all the same colors. You can notice you have your yellows. So this is like a cadmium yellow. This is a raw sienna. This is like a um, like a light green, leaf green. This is a like a green, like a viridian. This is a ultramarine, maybe a cobalt. It's like a cobalt blue here. This is like a let's what's this here? This is like a um, Prussian blue, beautiful blue. One of my favorite blues, Prussian blue. And then you have um, some oranges and reds, so cadmium orange, cadmium orange, maybe cadmium orange, cadmium orange light, cadmium orange. What is this? This is like, 
this is like a alizarin crimson so that's an alizarin crimson what do we have over here that's a um raw umber i mean i'm sorry burnt umber like a brown, dark brown burnt umber and what do we have here then this here we have like an ivory black that's an ivory black a warm black there's not much coolness to that if you wanted to make your ivory black a um Payne's gray take some of your um prussian blue and add that to your ivory black and then you've just made yourself a beautiful Payne's Payne's gray pines gray there you go all right so we're having fun here no worries no stress have fun with this video try this one out use whatever palette you have if you're an extreme beginner and you said oh i'm coming over to the other advanced courses over here on chris's channel that's fine you would just use your um extreme beginners palette which is your um prang 16 oval 16 set semi-moist paints and you just match your colors closely and you're all set all right i'm going to take a quick break grab a cup of coffee and i'll be right back All right, we are back and we're going to actually start with our painting and I'm trying to get my brushes together here. So um, I'm going to use my probably typical um, large and medium sized brushes here. So this is a uh, 14 Da Vinci Maestro Kalinsky Sable natural hair brush. If I uh, add some water to it and moisten up the uh, hairs, you'll see that it's got a good point on it and then this is my uh, Raphael number six if I moisten that up and kind of you can kind of see that has a, a, a nice point too as well so these are the two brushes that I use in this type of painting um, and again we're going to change it around a little bit I'm using some different colors just to see what's going to happen it's kind of exciting to try a new palette or you know sometimes see what kind of colors are going to happen as we go um hope you don't mind that uh hope you're uh, you're the artist out there you're kind of saying to yourself wow chris is kind of doing a different spin on things right now but i'm hoping you're happy with it because maybe you're going to want to do the same thing and pick up a different palette once in a while with some different colors you know these this is a hard uh these are hard colors so these are not squeezed tube paints here these are um pretty you can see these are hard paints that I've just uh, spritzed with some water to get them moist about a half an hour to an hour before I paint it here so I'm going to spritz a little more and then we're going to try out these new paints these new colors this new palette just for the fun of it why not change things up a little bit variety is the spice of life and now uh, we have our normal you know you can kind of see these are just two pretty much very standard brushes I always use natural hair brushes you can use any old brush you want it doesn't have to be anything like this you know you can use flat brushes you can use some um, cat's tongue brushes whatever whatever you want now the thing is here we're going to use the glazing technique here so that's the the first thing is we're going to use the glazing technique so I'm going to go over with a light wash of color first through the whole painting and then we'll let that dry and then we'll go over with our darker colors so this is a glazing technique maybe I'll put this at the top of the um, our, our this is the glazing technique so just so we kind of have that glazing technique so you can kind of tell right away I'm alerting everyone to the fact that we're doing we're doing the glazing technique we're not really doing the a la prima technique where we paint everything at one time and go slowly through the painting and kind of develop the paint. We're going the glazing technique, large washes. The first wash is a light wash of light colors, very, very light tonal values. And then we let that dry 100%, and then we go over with the darker colors. And that's all you have to remember. The glazing technique is basically your first wash is very light washes of color, and then the second wash over the top is darker colors. But you have to let that first wash dry 100% and that's all you have to remember so let's do that now with the glazing technique as well you can remember that you can enhance your glazing technique by 
pre-wetting your paper a little bit. So let's let's do that. See how I'm going to kind of put on some fresh, clean water. So I'm not. The the basic idea is I'm using fresh, clean water like this. You can kind of see that, right? That is that is fresh, clean water. No colors in there because I'm using fresh clean water. I've emptied out my water bucket so that there's no um, colors in that whatsoever. It's fresh, brand new water. I just poured in it like that. And then you get that onto the paper in a few spots here and there. You don't have to do the whole paper. And then work it down. Again, work down some of that fresh, clean water and kind of put it here and there a little bit everywhere, but not on the whole paper. Just spots of some damp water on your okay just like that now we're gonna say what color is the sky well blue cobalt blue that kind of a cobalt blue you know looking blue there and uh, what else some Prussian blue there we go so we have some Prussian blue and some cobalt blue working for us. And let's add some earthy kind of brown to that too. So let's make some earthy washes under here. This is going to look good. And then maybe a little bit of gold like that. So what we have is blue, some brown which is basically Prussian blue, cobalt blue, burnt umber, burnt umber. Now this is for people that are using my normal palette. You'll, I'm referencing my normal colors I use on a constant basis, so you'll be familiar with that. You're already successful. You know your colors. You're saying, oh, I know all those colors Chris is talking about. Yep, I know exactly what he's talking about. He's talking burnt umber there. He's talking yellow ochre or raw sienna there. He's talking Prussian blue over here. He's talking cobalt blue over there. So, you know, right away you're kind of seeing, even though I have these different color selections here in a different palette, they look the same, the colors. So that's all you have to remember. Once you have your main palette memorized, whatever, if you're using my normal colors on a consistent basis, you'll always say, oh, I know my normal palette that Chris uses all the time because I use the same palette and you stick with that same palette over and over and over again week after week, month after month, and even year after year. You're using the same colors over and over. Now I can switch my palette to a different palette like this which is I found at a garage sale and then I can just tell you yeah this one is a Prussian blue and this one is a cobalt blue and this color is a um, yellow ochre and this one is a burnt umber. And it's basically the same thing, so you won't have to worry. You'll just know what colors to use, and we're going to do that. All right, so let's get our sky washes going. Cobalt blue, Prussian blue. Okay, we're going to go up here, and again, I pre-wet the paper a little bit so you can kind of see already we're... And again, we're letting the washes do the work for us. And I think I like to have the top, very, very tippy top of the paper, darker. So that's where I we leave the top of the paper the darkest, and then it gets a little lighter as we go this way. And let it work for you. Let the water color and the water work for you. You can see I'm very, I'm just, I'm going straight in to the colors to get that dark effect up top. Hope you can see what I'm doing here. I'm letting the water and the paper and the colors work for me. I'm not using much, um, much effort. I've wet the paper a little bit, pre-wet the paper. And then as I go, I say, oh, I want the t 
top darker. So I can go right in straight to the paint, like that, straight into the paint, and add some of that in there as this paper is wet. Like that, you can kind of see the paper's wet and juicy and looking good. And there you go. You're getting a beautiful, incredibly um, powerful watercolor technique and look to your painting. Water is the powerful um, look to your watercolors using water. It's water color. If you had oil paints, you wouldn't be able to do this at all. You would never be able to do this with oil paints or even acrylics. So use your water as a um, as you paint watercolors. Use your water as your powerful tool as you go in your paintings, because you know if someone's going to show you a acrylic painting or someone's going to show you an oil painting if you show somebody your watercolor painting you're going to say look you can't do that with it you know you can't do that with oil painting and you can't do that with acrylic painting or charcoals only watercolor artists can do this which is tons of water beautiful washes and that gorgeous signature look of watercolor so okay now what i'm going to do is Again, I mentioned to you before, this is the first glazing that we're doing across this painting here. So we're doing the first glazing of beautiful washes, lighter, we're doing light washes, not dark. So the first wash is the light wash. Let's do the whole painting with light washes of blue. We're going to go over with other colors, but let's get that first wash of blue all the way across the painting. And those blues are Prussian blue and cobalt blue. That's all you have to remember. Get those first glazings of wash with your cobalt blue, your Prussian blue, and also add in some of your brown and gold, which is burnt umber and some uh, yellow ochre. Or raw sienna and as you can see look what we have look what we've done I'm a swashbuckler here I'm really swinging my brush around but that's how you get great watercolors get that wash on that paper, that first light wash, the whole way, and then you're happy, you're excited, you have a whole wash of paint across your whole watercolor paper, and you're halfway done with your painting, and it looks great. You walk away, you let this dry. If you're impatient like myself, you're going to break out your blow dryer and blow dry it off to dry it so you can get it right back in there and start painting again. But if you're, you know, maybe more patient and you want to wait, maybe you're going to go and have some lunch or some dinner, wait a couple hours. By that time, when you come back, it'll be dry enough that you can start your second washes over the top of this one, okay? But that's the main thing I always tell everyone. When you're using the glazing technique, once you get your first wash on like this, you absolutely have to let this dry 100% before you go in and do your darker washes over the top. Otherwise, everything's going to just completely get um, washed out. You'll have cauliflowers, blossoms, blooms. You'll have all kinds of crazy-looking, awful unpleasant unpleasing looking mess on your paper so that's all you have to remember do your first wash like this just like we did let it dry and then you come back and we'll do the darker washes after this one and this is the real beautiful wash it's the first one and it looks absolutely incredible you can see how we got the whole paper covered with tons of water tons of paint light washes some darker washes at the top here with some darker color just so we make this a little bit more um, looking true to life usually the sky is usually darker up top and then as it goes down into the horizon line it gets lighter so that's all we want to remember we're, we're sticking to a realistic look here and again let this dry we'll come right back in about maybe an hour or two I might use the blow dryer so I can come back and finish this video because I'm excited I'm going to start another one maybe or 
I'm going to be off doing something else here. I'm excited. Lots of stuff going on here in the studio. But in any case, thank you so much for watching. And if it's your first time ever being here on my video, watching my channel here, thanks so much for coming by. I'm really grateful you're coming by and watching our work here on YouTube. And again, feel free, you subscribe down here on the right-hand side below. That means YouTube's just going to alert you that I have a new video coming out. You just have to t tap the um, subscribe button, and then you tap the top bell button. There's a little bell there. You click that bell button. This way you get alerted that I'm making a new video. And that's all that it is. You're not going to get any emails. You're not going to get any text messages or phone calls. It's just YouTube's way of saying we want to show you that Chris has made a new video and we want to let you know he just has created a new video and that's all it is and there's no other issues or you know we hate those phone calls and text messages and emails from people all the time that we don't even know and you know all that hassle that's not what this is about the YouTube subscribe button just means they're gonna alert you that Chris has made a new video and that's it nothing else okay so feel f free to hit that subscribe button enjoy We'll be back in just a few minutes and we'll finish up this painting actually because we have all the, really the bulk of the work done. We have our first wash completed and after that it's pretty much clear sailing from there, okay? So um, we'll see you in just a few minutes and we'll finish up this painting. All right everybody, thanks again for sticking with us here. We have our beautiful land, uh, this is basically a seascape seascape painting underway. Um, you can kind of see we've let this dry now. Basically the key when you're letting your first wash dry, when you're using the glazing technique, your first wash, you do your whole wash across the whole page, you let that dry. You'll always notice that there's no sheen, there's no wetness to it, there's no shine to it at all. When it dries and you know it's ready to go back in and paint on, it's dry looking. There's no shine, there's no eggshell type gloss to it or no shiny um, wetness to it, that's when you know you can go back in and paint on it. Now I've used a, a blow dryer to blow dry my painting off. It's better if you let it go, if you're doing a finished painting, like if you're going to frame it or, or something, or you're going to make it for a gallery showing, or if you're going to put your, um, or you're going to put your paintings up for sale, better to let it dry naturally. Just let it dry for like two, three hours. But if you're just doing it for a composition, Maybe it's for your own painting in your own house. You know, you can you can do, you know, the blow dryer and dry it off fast. It will look a little better if you let it dry naturally. That's all I'm saying. Um, you're the artist. You have to decide how important your painting is. And if you do want to use something like a blow dryer to it, speed up the process. For me, using a blow dryer and speeding up the drying process is totally fine unless you're absolutely fanatical about, you know, the highest level of integrity with your watercolor painting. Other than that, you can kind of, you know, use your, your blow dryer, get it dry quick, and get back in and start painting. And that's what we're going to do here. So, some of the greatest uh, watercolor artists I've ever seen paint on YouTube and in other genres is they're using a Ron Ranson Hake brush like this. So, this we're going to use in just a few minutes, you'll see, but um, I really think every watercolor artist should have a, a Ron Ranson Hake brush, medium size. You can get them in large and small. I get mine at Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. I don't have any um, affiliations with um, some of these brush brands and things like that. I'm just saying this is the best that I've found out there. If you can find something less expensive and better, you, you can do that too. But Cheap Joe's Art Stuff has some great artist tools for watercolor artists and the Ron Ranson Hake by Cheap Joe's Art Stuff is where I got my Hake brushes. I got three of them, a small, a medium, and a large. Um, I think this is the large size one here. And the small size, I don't know if I have that at hand, but suffice to say these are excellent brushes. And these will give you some great results with your grasses and weeds and things like that. So this is at the standby. We're going to use this in just a few minutes. I dampen it up first before I start painting. I dampen up this brush here. And I splay out the hairs like that. And then I set it over to the side. And then when I'm ready to use it, I dip it into the colors and we put some grasses and weeds and things. Okay, so 
Um, let's get started. Again, we said we we're going to use two main brushes, the 14 Da Vinci Maestro round brush, Kalinsky Sable hair brush, natural hair brush, and then also to the uh, number six Raphael Kalinsky Sable brush. So these are the two main brushes we're using. And of course, uh, we're kind of keeping it simple and adding one brush to it here, the uh, Ron Ranson Hake brush by Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. Great brush. Again, a lot of great artists use this brush, you'll notice. And uh, let's get started here. So I'm going to use the uh, number 14 Da Vinci Maestro to get some of these uh, first washes going as we go. So here, we're going to get some greens. So I'm going to use my dark green and my light green here. Put a little brown in there to mellow that green out a little bit. So I'm using some burnt umber mixed into my uh, viridian green and uh, sap green, let's say, or leaf green, like that. And uh, also, too, let's add some cadmium red, alizarin crimson. So we're going to get a nice greenish red here. Mostly green, though, with some burnt umber. And then let's just start getting in some grass hills here. Maybe even a little bit of some black, some ivory black. I'm just going to mix up some all different colors here. It's good to keep the tops of the hills darker. I think that does look a little better. Okay. And then you're just kind of sweeping across like this. Like this. quicker the better. Don't get frustrated and like this. Like that. Now let's go in and do some golden colors. Gold with some green. Golden green. So these two yellows. So that would be yellow ochre, cadmium yellow. And you're just going to go across the painting with your cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, a little bit of green, a little bit of blue. You're mixing things up a little bit. You're trying to get some grayish looking colors. Here I paint over this area here because these are going to be dark rocks. So if you're going to paint an area that's really dark, like a dark rock or two, you can go over that with a lighter color. Always remember that with watercolors. If you have some light, and so I'm throwing some washes across. Just like that. If you have darker washes, like rocks, really dark walk, rocks here, you can paint over those with lighter washes because you're going over with a darker wash anyway so that doesn't matter that's not going to affect anything right if you're going over with something really dark you can paint a light over top of it because that that's not going to affect it i hope you can see that does that make sense okay so now we are developing the foreground here which we have we're going to let this dry 100% before we do anything else. Now, we're going to switch over to our number 6 Raphael brush to get some of these lighter washes here. And then if you see, there's a couple of 
So now if that happens where you have some splashes on your paper, add a little water to it. See, I'm going to add some water to this here. If you splash on some areas you don't want to have splashed, and you could just add some water to it, let it sit there for a second or two, and then just take a bit of some... There you go. Problem resolved. Okay, so I'm just doing some scratches here with my nails just to get some lines going across. Good. All right, now I'm going to change the water out. Fresh, clean water. Change your water out as much as possible. Remember, that's a really good thing to remember. Try to change out your water often when you're painting. So now we have some, let's go with some cobalt blue. We, I'm calling this cobalt blue. It looks kind of like a cobalt blue to me. What do you think? And I mix it in with some of the other leftover washes on there. But I think that looks good. That's a nice cobalt blue with a little bit of gold to kind of give it a little bit of a warmer. And then what else do we have here? Maybe some... This is kind of like a viridian green. So a viridian green and cobalt blue. Let's see if we can get some distant mountains here. And I'm just going to take my... my round brush here, my number six, Raphael, and I'm just going to and if you have some problems with with some of the washes, just blot it up, don't worry about it. And I'll take some more of that cobalt blue. Just to do those distant mountains there, you can kind of see that I'm trying to get those distant mountains in. Okay, distant mountains, good. Now let's go in and we'll get some burnt umber. Viridian green, burnt umber, some orange. Prussian blue. Now let's get in some of these over here. This is... This is a closer bit of rocks here. And then let's get back in here and do some more. Red, alizarin crimson, orange, Prussian blue, Let's get some really good darks here, Br Prussian blue, burnt umber, let's get some black in there, some ivory black, burnt umber, Prussian blue, some reds and oranges, so you kind of mix it up, and these are your rocks here, so this is rocks which are sharp looking. And then some softer round shapes too, and there we have it. that and then we have some more rocks over here 
And these are and over here too. So you're remembering that we have rocks going through here. Some rocks that are in the scene. They're, they're kind of going across the scene and that actually really is a beautiful um, sort of um, it's like a technique you can use where you can have like a line going across your painting, like a nice pleasing line drifting across your scene where you have some rocks here like so. And then maybe there's some, there's another rock here. Like that. And you're using your super dark darks. And you can see that when I do my rocks, a lot of times they're going to be sharp edges, like so. More angular, right? And then there's a few softer edges on there too. But I think that is going to be good. So we have some rocks. You can even add a few over here. So you can get those dark darks again. You're just using those same colors. And you can put a few more over here. A few more there. So these are our rocks along the landscape and seascape that we're doing. And I think that looks really good. I would, at this point, do a couple splashes. Splashes give you texture, something additionally to your watercolor paintings that will enhance the look. Okay, and then we're going to actually add some more um, interesting uh, details to this painting. But first, we're going to let this all dry. Because again, we always mention, it, it, we want to have things dry. And... Uh, that's the, the key with glazing technique. So we're using the glazing technique. First wash we did was the blues across the whole painting. For the most part, we did add a little gold. But for the most part, it was a blue wash across the whole painting, the sky wash. And we brought that right down into the foreground of the painting, right to the bottom. Then our second wash, our second glazing was the darker washes here. You can see the hills the um, rocks and the rocky coastlines here and the little jetties going out in the distant. We did some medium tonal values of the rocks and the hills over here in the distance. And then we also did our darker, the very, very dark darks of the rocks here on the foreground. The last thing we want to do, once this dries 100% again, we're going to let this dry 100%. Again, that's two hours approximately, or if you want to use a blow dryer, you can blow dry this all off in about 10-15 minutes or 10 minutes and you can get back started again doing your uh, painting, finishing things up. But for the most part, this is like almost like a, a three-part glazing technique. So you have your blue first, then your earthy colors for your hills, your distant hills, your earthy golds and greens here on the foreground of this shoreline here along the coast with some dark rocks, some dark darks for your rocks that we made. Once this is 100% dry, again, 15, 10 minutes with a blow dryer, 5, 10 minutes with a blow dryer at most. It's probably like 2, 3 minutes with a blow dryer. Or an hour or two, you take a break, you maybe go do a couple errands, you go, you have some breakfast, some lunch, some dinner, whatever time it is by you, you're all set. You come back and you finish up. So we're going to do that. We're going to come right back and finish up with our last few bit of touches to this painting and you're going to see it's going to look absolutely phenomenal. This is a type of painting. This here, well let's look at this. What is this? This is probably like a, a 10 by 12. Let's see if I'm correct. I just was guessing. Yeah, 10 by, yeah, 12. 10 by 12. I was guessing at that but I have a great eye for measurements and uh, so um, 10 by 12. You can make this into a 24 by 36 
all you 24 inch by 36 which is a large beautiful large painting you could put up on your wall in your place your studio your living room your dining room you know whatever you want you can give it as a gift too if you want to somebody they'd love it okay so the thing is I'm mentioning is you can take this do this two or three times in a smaller format like this here and then once you're do you've done this two or three times you're so comfortable with it and so uh, you know just it flows so nicely you can do a really large one like a 24 by 36 watercolor paper format and you can have a giant size watercolor painting with this same look and that's a you could frame it and you have a beautiful painting okay so I want you to do some really beautiful paintings that you can frame and put in your place or give as a gift or even if you want you can get into competitions and bring it to your local galleries and your local art schools and things and try to get it into some competition whatever it is you're the artist if you want to do some competition get some paintings get them large put them in frames and you can get out there and you can do some really great work and get some uh, popularity and uh, exposure for yourself if you want to you know continue as an artist and you want to kind of start selling your paintings and getting out there and becoming a professional artist and if you just want to do it for fun well hey you know what there's lots of people in your family your friends co-workers they'd love a large painting or they'd love this type of painting for their own place and whatever so you can create some for them too okay as a gift or you know if you want to tell them hey throw me twenty dollars or fifty bucks and I'll, I'll make you a nice painting okay so I'm here to make you get excited about watercolors. Whatever your goal is, main thing is have fun with it, enjoy it. We're having fun here. We're doing the glazing technique, simple as that. Okay, so we're going to come back, finish this one, and we'll get started next week on another one. And uh, we're just going to have a great time here. So we'll see you in just a minute. Okay, everybody, so now we're looking at our painting. We've done our first glazing, our second glazing. That's two glazings we've done. The first one was our light blue wash. The second one was our earthy colors. Earthy colors, the greens, the browns, the reds. We got in our shoreline. We got in some really, really dark darks with our Prussian blue, cobalt blue, burnt umber, and ivory black to get our dark rock colors here. Now the final thing we have to do is just get in some weeds and uh, some brush and a little bit of interesting details in the foreground and I think we're gonna have a finished painting so again I talked about it before the uh, Ron Ranson hake brush or hake brush by Cheap Joe's art stuff that's where I get my uh, hake brushes from Cheap Joe's and um, we're gonna get some grass and weeds here in the foreground so the thing I do is I dampen this up this brush first I dampen it up first you can even leave this brush like this set it over here and you get your um, other brush you're using. I might be using my Da Vinci Maestro. And I'm going to try to get some greens and uh, browns in here. Over here, some greens and browns for some, you know, kind of that earthy, earthy uh, colors for um, some weeds and things like that and brush and a little bit of orange in there too. Then over here, I'm going to add a little bit of yellows, cadmium yellow and um, some, so this would be cadmium yellow for those of you that use my normal palette, cadmium yellow, and then some uh, raw sienna or uh, yellow ochre if you would like. Those two work fine with a little bit of burnt umber. And there we have it. So we have two good looking, um, so some greens here, more green. I like the green there with those other mixes. So th there you have it. You have some really good mixes out on your palette. And then you're going to take your hockey brush like so. So you're going to take your hockey brush and you're just going to get in there and get the brush loaded up with some paint. And again, we're just going to use a little bit in the foreground, so not a whole lot, but and you just throw some some beautiful some some nice wispy look. Look at that. Splash some paint on there. If you have to, you blot up with some tissue too, you know, like that. Then let's get some, uh, again, dry off the brush, the hockey brush, splay out the, the hairs of the hockey brush, and get some of those golden colors there.
and then maybe go back in and get some darks, some blue, some black, some blue, some brown, some greens. I'm just mixing it all up here. I like that, and just do a few more. Like that. And then maybe also too, I, I always, uh, I like to use a needlepoint brush. So I'm gonna use a needlepoint brush here. Also called a rigger. It's either a rigger or a needlepoint brush you can use. And then I just do a couple of these. So these would be some weeds here like so. And if you do a few of those, it just enhances the look of the foreground even more. Like so, you can see. And a couple splashes. A couple splashes along the shoreline for the sand. So I'm just going to add some speckles for sand. I take my needlepoint brush, add some of our medium tonal values here with some brown and some greens and golds. Mix that all up, right? And then I just do some speckles. And that gives you the sand feel. So when you want to have that sand kind of feel, maybe there's some sand along this shoreline here as we're doing a nice coastal scene. You know, you just add some of those specks. Speckles of sand, like that. And then a few more, like this. Okay, and then you're all set. You have a gorgeous coastal scene here. If a couple splashes go over your sky, just blot them up a little bit, but it's, it's going to look okay. You don't have to worry about that. Messy looks good with watercolors because watercolor is a messy medium. So you're going to have some messes on, on your watercolors. You just leave them as they, they happen and you're fine. Let's remove our tape here so we can kind of see how this looks. Isolated. There we go. And I try to keep this neat as I go. Like that. And there we have it. Okay, so you have a great scene here. Try this out. Try it two, three times until you get it right, or four or five times. You try, maybe try it in sm a smaller format than this. This is like, a, again, like a 10 by 12. You can try this in a six by eight or something like that, and you practice it two, three, four times. Bump it up to a 10 by 12, and then eventually you're gonna you're gonna do this in a 12, you know, like a 24 by 36. Try to get it to a large size. The only thing you have to add larger brushes. So eventually you're gonna have to use some larger brushes. You know, you have your hake brush that's pretty large. So you can use your hake brush. You can use another wider brush like so, like a flat brush. And this brush here, which is the um, number uh, 14. So between these three brushes, you can do a really large 24 by 36 with, with these three brushes here. You just have to add a, a larger brush for your, for your larger washes. But that's all it is, is larger brushes for your larger paintings. And you're pretty much set. You just got to mix a little more extra paint as you go when you're doing a larger painting so you don't run out. But I hope you, enj you enjoyed this uh, video and this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate all your beautiful comments, everyone. You know, I just highly appreciate that you come into the comments section. You leave great comments, insightful comments that everyone else can look at and draw from and kind of understand the, the really good uh, thoughts and insights that you have as watercolor artists as you're coming up the ranks and coming up the ladder uh, of watercolor. A lot of you make great comments and really other people look at them, so always remember when you're leaving your comments, people are learning from your comments and they're understanding what you're saying and they're applying it to their artwork too and, and, and making improvements. So again, that's why I thank everybody for coming into the comments section and making comments because a lot of times I see great comments from everybody, kind of like helping everyone else to come along and understand some of the ideas that people have, some of your questions, some of the things that you found were good for you all those type of things. So again, thank you for the comments, the kindness too, for just saying, hey, thank you, Chris. Beautiful job. I really appreciate you. 
And I appreciate everyone out there that's watching because you really give me all the encouragement and excitement to keep painting in watercolor here on YouTube. So that's why I paint is because I know you're all having a great time learning watercolor, having fun every week here with us. And um, so we'll see you on the next video. And again, I hope you will try this um, tutorial, try this painting, get this one down. This is a real fun landscape, seascape style painting. And again, people will love this. You can make this into a really large style painting, get it framed, you know, put a mat around it, get it framed. You can sell them. You can give them to friends for gifts for, you know, uh, birthdays, Christmas time, whatever holidays you have. Um, also, too, you can put it up in your own home if you'd like to have a beautiful painting all um, beautifully rendered. And then you can put it in a frame and have it in your own place. You'll be excited. You'll you'll kind of see that you've made progress. You're able to create a beautiful seascape style painting here with a frame, with a mat. You can research all that stuff out on YouTube or else if you need any help with matting and framing your paintings, just leave me a comment in the comment section or email me on my email address, which I always have in the um, YouTube uh, section of my, um, uh, on YouTube, I always leave my address. It's chrispetri at att.net. Again, Chris Petrie at att.net. That's my email address. And you can email me if you need any questions on how to frame and mat paintings. I'm more than happy to kind of share with you how to do it. It's really quite simple. And I'll even make a video very soon on how to mat and frame a painting. It's actually very, very simple. So I mat and frame all my paintings for whatever type of uh, situation I might have, whether it's to frame it and put it in my own place, in my own studio, or if I mat and frame my own paintings for gallery showings or shows, or if I'm actually creating a painting for someone and making a um, painting that's I'm um, actually doing for commission work or someone says, Chris, they're hiring me to do a painting, I'll show you how to create the painting just like we did here and then how to mat and frame it real nicely. I can share all that information you know, with you if you need that. Just let me know. I'll make a video on it and then we can uh, kind of share that with everyone here. So if you're looking to bump up to the next level where you're starting to mat and frame your paintings. If you let me know in the comments section you want something like that, I'll make a video on that, okay? All right, so everyone have a beautiful and pleasant time painting and we'll see you on the next video, okay? Bye-bye.